Hello, I'm Bernard Rieke, and together with my colleague Daniel Zielasko, we'd like to basically propose to question the way we often talk about pros and cons of different locomotion interfaces. So how do we best move through virtual reality? This question has fascinated a lot of researchers and VR developers, and there are indeed a lot of different ways we can do this. We can walk, we can walk on treadmills, we can walk in place, we can even finger walking in place, we can do arm swinging, we can use pointing base steering, we can use a classic joystick or thumbstick as often done, there are foot joysticks, we can use mouse and keyboard. And many other approaches, such as sitting and using the chair to basically steer the locomotion, head joystick, leaning based interfaces, or standing. Now, all of these interfaces are really continuous locomotion interfaces as compared to teleporting, which is gaining a lot of traction and interest more recently. Now, the typical question that is often asked is what are the pros and cons of the different technologies and which one should we use? So the way this often goes is we analyze continuous with this discontinuous, for example, in terms of movement time. So we know that a continuous locomotion by definition has a finite speed, so it really takes some time to get anywhere. And so this can be time consuming, boring, annoying, inefficient, so this is often seen as a disadvantage. Whereas teleporting is instantaneous, uh, so in a way that's a dream of any frequent traveler. You can go anywhere as quickly as you like, as, so, as long as you can somehow indicate where you want to go through for teleporting. So this is uh, typically an advantage. Now, what I would like to argue that whether something's an advantage or a disadvantage really depends on your goal. So for example, in this context of movement time and velocity, if the goal is really to enjoy the journey, to explore, to really process the transition to the new environment, to have time to think about it, to prepare what's uh, up and coming, then continuous locomotion might actually be more suitable. Where this teleporting might not really give you this time to relax and enjoy the journey, time to switch the mental spatial context, which also can take time. Whereas if the goal is really efficiency, then this pattern can be reversed. So what we propose is really to distinguish between the actual attributes of an interface or a technique and whether this can be used as a benefit or disadvantage because it really depends a lot on the goal of the actual simulation. Another example, audiovisual self-motion cues and sensory conflict. So for continuous locomotion, we always will have continuous optic flow or sometimes maybe even tactile and auditory flow. So this means we can perceive vection, so perceive self-motion, which is to be more so when we have a more embodied locomotion interface and cross uh, sensory consistency. But for teleporting, there's no optic flow because there's basically no uh, self-motion cues. So by definition, there cannot be vection, so no perceived self-motion which also means there's no dynamic sensor conflict between the cues indicating self-motion with the stationarity because they all indicate stationarity. Now these are the attributes. Where this can be a benefit or disadvantage really depends on what uh, we want to achieve. So if the goal is, for example, to achieve a more naturalistic, embodied, real life-like experience where you always continuously move through space, unless we fall asleep, then continuous locomotion might be the best approach where this teleporting might not be. However, if you really want to avoid cyber sickness and we are prone to cyber sickness, but for some reason we cannot physically move or use any of the other continuous techniques that reduce motion sickness, then teleporting might be the better option compared to continuous locomotion. Another example, effort. So continuous locomotion, depending on what you do, so for example, if it's walking, it can be quite strenuous, especially if you have extended or challenging paths. So often continuous locomotion methods can be more exhausting, can also be more cognitively or physically demanding, requiring more sustained attention, where this teleporting basically has minimal or no effort as long as you can indicate where you want to go next, typically with the controller. So these are the attributes. Now, for example, if your goal is really to exercise, to lose weight, or really to have this feeling of accomplishment and achievement, similar to hiking up a mountain and then at the top you're a bit exhausted, but you really feel this 
deep sense of accomplishment because you put a lot of effort in it, then continuous locomotion might actually be the better interface, whereas teleport might not. Conversely, if you're just interested in uh, quickly getting somewhere easily and convenience is a key point, then locomotion, continuous locomotion methods might not be the best choice, whereas a more couch potato-like interface like teleporting might be a much better suited approach. And we'll discuss some more, uh, more of these attributes and implications in the paper, including, for example, path integration and the relationship to real-world experiences. So our main point is really that whether we evaluate an attribute as an advantage or disadvantage is not an absolute thing, but it is really highly context dependent. So we can basically use a similar idea for just about anything you want to compare. So we have an approach A and B with different attributes, then we can really distinguish this and start thinking about the context, the goal, what do we really want to achieve? What's the desired user experience? What are the individual preferences and predispositions? Is somebody able to even move? Do they get uh, sick easily? What is the current mood or state or expectation of the user? Because that might change depending on the circumstances. What is the application specific context and scenario? And a lot of these aspects really determine whether an attribute can be used or even utilized as an advantage or disadvantage for each of the different approaches. So what we proposed really is that by analyzing the attributes in this way, we can really start to utilize these attributes. And we propose that this context dependency should really be taken into account for future studies and might also help to really provide more personalized or specific and flexible interfaces. So thanks a lot for listening and feel free to contact us if you come up with any interesting attributes and discussions. Thanks so much.